Ladies and gentlemen, live from Studio A at Argentum Studios in North Hollywood, California, you're watching Talk Talk with Philly G. Hey, what's up, everybody? Guess what? You're watching Talk Talk with Philly G, and I'm your host, Philly G. Yes, he is. Once again, I'm back in the captain's chair with my co-host, Paul. Luca. Yes. Drago. Yes. Dude. All of the above. Yes. Happy uh, post-Oscar day. Happy post-Oscar day. I would like to say we have a great show for you today. I'm super excited because we have Rick Kumazawa. That's right. Working actor Rick Kumazawa. Working actor. On the grind. He works hard. He does. Right? And from his management company, Jackson Entertainment, we have... Cheryl right. Jackson, Cheryl she will Jackson be, will be coming on. in and saying hi for a few minutes. We'll talk to her uh, quickly about Jackson Entertainment, and I will not call it an agency. It's a management company. Right. Thank you. Get it right. They are different, Phil. As I Get it right, Phil. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a big sign here in the studio that says, <laughs> it says agent with the big X yeah. over it. Yeah. Guess and what? Ed, guess what? what? They had the Academy, the Oscars last night, Academy Awards. Mm -hmm. How awesome was that? Very important, monumental Hollywood events. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just initially, by the way, we do have uh, Rick on the microphone, not in camera, but please feel free to chime in. Yeah, yeah there he is, everyone. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> hey, now. So the uh, Oscars, we had the hosts. Who were the hosts? You know, I didn't, I hate to say it, I didn't watch it. Okay, Rick, it was Chris Rock and Steve Martin. Yeah. Those two? Yeah. Oh. Who would have thought? But they were actually great. I mean, Steve yeah. Martin, a, a I don't know how many times he's hosted, but mm -hmm. four? I mean, he's hosted a few times. Chris Rock, he had a, he had to run their uh, consecutive uh, hosting gigs. Right, right. Um, and together, they were really funny. Okay. I thought it was a little bit prepared. They were reading. You could tell they were like reading the jokes rather than just, right. you know, telling the jokes. But they were still pretty funny. They didn't want things to go this way or that way. So. They don't want to get Ricky gervais yeah. oh, Dude, it was a little <laughs> bit safe, yet I give it the thumbs up. Yeah. Um, mainly because there's just a wealth of uh, content. You know, we had so many great shows and I think, you know, looking, I'm not going to go into each one because we all have our, um, you know, our preferences for what we saw. Sure, sure. But if you looked at the audience, everyone looked good. The, did, did you watch the pre-show? Mm -hmm. They had, I mean, that big guy, I should know his name, big the big guy in drag. <laughs> like, it's like he was interviewing everyone and he actually did a really great job. Um, so I thought. Overall, it flowed very well. I thought the content was good. Everyone looked really great. So I would say this is like a high watermark for the Academy Awards. Good job, right? And we have a lot of friends in the industry. So it's really, um, you know, when this is the biggest night of the year, we expect a lot, mm -hmm. don't we? And so when, we, when it actually delivers, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, then we can kind of sit back and we go, yes. It was not without controversy. We're not going to talk about that right now. I want to talk that on the backside. But um, look, everyone's doing stuff out there. And the, the, the whole thing about diversity and community and, and the world as being our playground means that there's that much more content for us to enjoy. So I think some of the people who may or may not have enjoyed who the actual winners were are probably the people who are afraid of competition. Can I put it that way? Okay. Right? Um, what have you been up to, Paul? Uh, I got back from Hawaii. Yeah. I did my Hawaii Five-O spot. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, tell us about it. Uh, I had actually a really embarrassing thing happen when we were filming because uh, I've, I've come from a lot of like acting classes and I believe in like commitment to the scene and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, there was a part where I'm in... I'm in uh, hard soled shoes and I'm behind a bar and in the middle of my line I kind of tap my foot on the wet rubber part and yeah. it's just this awful fart noise <laughs> I mean it was loud like the whole bar is quiet because of the scene and then I do my line right. and then the actor that I'm on he just busts out laughing yelling at me that I'm a true professional for farting in the middle of my thing and, and still keeping on going and I had to clarify to everybody especially wardrobe that right? I was fine yes uh, but that, aside from that one little uh, hiccup slash fart uh, it was it was a very very first class experience I loved it sounds like a William Shatner moment does he do that <laughs> he was accused of that at one point is that why his acting is so 
full of pauses. <laughs> <laughs> He's waiting right? for that. Well, you don't want to, yeah, you don't want to yeah. miss a moment. Don't wow. rush Shatner, guys. Don't rush him. <laughs> All right. So you played a character role of a bartender. I'm, I'm not supposed to talk too much oh, about it, but okay. But you yeah. you played a role of uh, it's a one time or is it a reoccurring? It's a role? it's a co star thing. Yeah. That's awesome, mm-hmm. right? It was a lot of fun. And how long ago did you audition for the part? Oh, it was fast. It was uh, I auditioned at the end of the uh, at the beginning of the week, and then by the end they told me I had it, and then by the beginning of next week I was on the plane. It was very fast. And they had a, a like a producer or someone who like got your tickets and everything. Like I got tickets first class and first class. shuttle to and from airport and wow, yeah, it was it was really really great. Yeah, I'm totally spoiled now. This so. is CB- Wait, CBS. CBS, yeah. CBS, yeah. Mm-hmm. Who knew? Yeah. Who knew? Wow, they CBS, feel, uh, we're impressed. Right? They right? got that show and Magnum PI and Blue Bloods are like number one in CBS. Like they're for they have like the top time. demographic yeah. for that age. Yeah, CBS yeah. is kicking butt. That's a whole thing that I'd, you know, like to talk about is the whole Nielsen ratings now, because mm-hmm. we have, you know, it's all cable TV. Yeah. And they know exactly everything about everybody now, right? Right. Yeah. You know, what you're watching, when you're watching it, what you recorded, all that kind of stuff. And to uh, be number one on three shows oh, yeah. for their time slot, mm. for the demographic that they're going after. Yep. I mean, that's a that's impressive, mm-hmm. right? Network TV is still alive. alive well, well, I think yeah. the I think what was uh, really important is they felt, although we're number one, we need something a little bit more to solidify our spot at number one. So you know what they went for? Paul. Oh, right. So we need to bring in the heavy hitter. Heavy hitters. We yeah. need, all right? Yeah. So you, yeah, I mean, there you go. And then, so you did your scene. Did you get to stay any extra or like, they're like, you're out. Oh, like, you're I mean, they, they shuttle you everywhere. It's all very fairly prescribed. So back to my trailer, take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean like you don't get to stay um, any extra days. But you know, I asked for I asked for the last available flight out of there. Okay. I just wanted to, but yeah, I got a day after to. And did you go with your girl or it was just you? Uh, yeah. With my girlfriend and. She's never been to Hawaii, so it was a good experience. Wow. Yeah, we figured, yeah, might as well strike while the iron's hot. Right. Uh, it would have been it would have been a lonely trip without her. Because it's Waikiki's not the fun, bustly place I remember. It's way more shopping it's and commercial, commercial centers now. Uh, yeah. Uh, they ruined it. The Hawaiian village is gone like it used to be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's a little outdoor market place. Were you ever there, Rick, when they had the Hawaiian village? They had the huts and uh, gone now. Uh, but th- thankfully, the other side of the island, the Kaneohe side, is still beautiful and still looks the same. Like There's where the visitor everywhere. center is? And like local stuff, North Shore and yeah. the K-Bay. And, yeah. Beautiful, right? beautiful. Hawaii. Go there. <laughs> right? Go there. I just write these things in the moment. <laughs> right, yeah. Hawaii. But we don't, want anyone, we don't want our audience to go there yet because first, we've got to remind our audience to uh, listen to Talk Talk on YouTube at Argentum Media page. Like, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notifications so you don't miss any new Argentum content. Did you say it's on YouTube? On YouTube, that's right. YouTube, okay. And Instagram. Check out Talk Talk with Philly G on Instagram. Right. Go ahead. So uh, we're in our first commercial, aren't we? Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. You know what, Phil? You're a man of uh, high class and fine dining. You travel the world. You appreciate uh, good food and wine festivals, do you not? I do. Well... The first ever Bravo's Top Chef Food and Wine Festival is coming to Universal Studios Hollywood from March 19th to the 20th, 2020. A two-day culinary excursion where fans will be able to enjoy an all-inclusive eclectic menu inspired by the series Top Chef, including live challenges, food and wine pairings, and panels with Top Chef alums. Make sure you check out... uh, Make sure you check out... The, yes, uh, the, <laughs> the Top SD. Chef Food and Wine Festival coming to Universal Studios this March. Yes. Uh, general admission, you'll have, boy, tons of stuff here. Delectable culinary tastings, curated wines, live yes. quick fire challenges with chef testants from Top Chef Season 17, All Stars LA, panel interviews with fan favorite alum Shirley Chung, contestants from Season 17, interactions with the chef, themed photo opportunities for your Instagram page and merchandise, commemorative credentials, and a keepsake gift. All that comes with the general admission, Phil. Can you believe it? <laughs> that's uh, that's awesome. I'll tell you what, we're going to leave it on me. I'm going to talk about this a little bit. You guys are going to switch seats, and we're going to get Rick in the hot seat. Um, so here, give me that, Paul. First, this is the um, literature right. on Universal Studios Hollywood. In case you haven't been in a while, you should be. I would say there's no other experience like theme park experience in Southern California that is better than Universal Studios Hollywood. Um, and now a, co- a, a collab, if you will, is Bravo TV. Their TV show called Top Chef is having an experience and you get to go. And unfortunately for 
you know, us regular folk, the VIP experience is already sold out. However, no. get the uh, regular experience. And then all those things that Paul has described already are yours. It's going to be great. So I highly recommend not only do you sign up for this experience, but go to the park. There's a lot of great stuff. If you haven't been there in a while, you got to go. Um, and guess what? Halloween's just around the corner, isn't it? Halloween Horror Nights? No? No? That's a big horror. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I just wait for it. I mean, there's nothing better. <laughs> right? Well, they, they are expanding Halloween Horror Nights. Like, it's getting longer yeah. and longer. It's yeah. now like 27 weeks long. Hey, everybody, guess what? We have our guest here, Rick Kumazawa. What's Thank up? You. What's up? Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. No, thanks for coming. It's great to be had. Um, Thank you. You know? So, <laughs> Wow. Rick is yes. a native of Kentucky. Yep. Right? Doesn't look like it, but he is. <laughs> and he, yes, he, he's playing it off right now, yep. acting coy. Yeah. Uh, you're an actor. I am. Mm -hmm. You're a model. Yes. Right? Yeah. What else? Sure. Anything else in the, um, in the professional categories? Professional categories? We'll talk about soccer, too. Yeah. But yeah. That, that's... I guess wrong. I'm into fitness. Ooh. That's one thing. Yeah. Do you... Do, like, I'm not professional... By any means, but I'm very enth enthusiastic about it. Right. Yeah. So before we go forward, Rick is going to tell us his Instagram page. I guess sure. it's just Rick. Or handle. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So tell it's uh it's at, in, at it's yeah Instagram uh, at Rick Kumazawa R I C K K U M A Z A W A, no space in between. So yeah. There we go. Just for our viewers, are they going to find hot modeling photos? Ah, uh, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Maybe if you Am like I wearing shirts, yeah. maybe, maybe not. <laughs> if you like know. cheesecake, <laughs> yeah. go, go yeah. to Rick's uh, Instagram page. Yeah. No, but really the nice thing about uh, being Japanese is it's very simple to spell. Kuma -za exactly. Wa, it's right? how, how it sounds. Yeah. Kuma um, wa. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Kuma -za -wa, Rick. Yeah. go there and you're going to see a lot of um, <laughs> pages of uh, a, lot a lot of shirtless of, photos. Well, it's a lot of images no, of, but, of what yeah. he's up to. Yeah. Um, I'll show you. Yeah. Can we, yeah. can we go back in time? Sure. I mean, let's go how, back. How long? How long? Well, <laughs> how long are we talking? <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, let's go back to the Kentucky days. Okay, sure. Right? Yeah. So, well, both of your parents are from Japan. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they moved here, and you were born actually in Kentucky. In Kentucky, Lexington, right? yeah. And as I uh, read on TMZ, you moved. <laughs> TMZ, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Gossips. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't hit that level yet. I hope not. You're not trying hard enough. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll so, see. no, you were born in uh, Kentucky. Yeah. You stayed there until around six years old? Or no, I, I, the thing is, I was in Kentucky until four. Four, Yeah, okay. but then so, I lived in Indiana, which is right next to Kentucky, right. Um, for, for a while. Okay, years, now, yeah. do you think the culture is different from uh, Kentucky to Indiana? No, no, not at all. Different. <laughs> it's the same. Well, I don't know. It's yeah, the same. Know. Yeah, it's different. I mean, it's yeah, the same. I mean, obviously, they, they have, I guess... I don't know. There was nothing you missed when you moved. You were like, man, I really miss the barbecue. Or no, not really. Huh. Well, the thing is, there was a there was a good six years in between Kentucky and Indiana. Okay. I was in Japan at that time, uh, right? Yeah. So, for me, Kentucky and Indiana looked exactly the same. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I left Kentucky. Yeah. I lived in Japan for six years. Right. I came back to Indiana. So that's like, that's an interesting yeah, part of the story. The same, so, yeah. But in your very early formative yeah, years, yeah. you didn't even know you were oh, yeah. being ingrained. The thing into is, Southern I didn't culture. even speak English until I was eleven. Right. When I moved to Indiana, oh, wow. so it was obviously a challenge mm -hmm. um, yeah. moving into a new town, not knowing the language, and nobody looks like me. So it's it's uh it's crazy. Okay, you so know? you're you're born four years old. Yeah. You, you move with both parents or just your mom? Both back parents. There? Both to, Back to to Japan. Tokyo? No, uh, Nagoya. Nagoya, okay. That's the central. You know this place. Yes. Yeah, central Japan. Right. Um, and I so was, you start yeah. school in kindergarten. Yeah. I mean, right? Pre. Pre, yeah. You, you were still small at that point. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and then you just went, you went through the elementary school system. Yeah, until fifth grade Yeah. in Japan. So you didn't know the difference. You didn't even know. No, I didn't even. Anything. Yeah, exactly. Right. I've heard stories that I was born in the United States, but uh, I didn't know if, I, if that was true until, you know, <laughs> I saw my passport. <laughs> I was like, oh, OK, I guess I'm an American. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is well, I mean, that's really special. So yeah, you, you yeah. could be bicultural. Yes. Right. Yes. Bilingual yep. easily. Um, yep. And that's, you know, a skill that it's a blessing. lot of people yeah, for sure. have yeah. to work very yeah, hard. Growing towards. up, I was like, ah. Oh. That's a pain. But, so yeah. you went through the school system, the yep. elementary school system, as mm -hmm. a Japanese kid. Yes, sir. And uh, I'm sure, like, uh, fond memories, right? 
Yeah, yeah. I I mean yeah. I know. Yeah, <laughs> from yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so my wife is Japanese. If you don't know, I have three kids, and they've gone through the elementary school system in the summertime in Japan in the public right. schools. Right, right. And it's a lot of fun. It's very. Um, Childlike, it's like it's very nurturing to children. It is, it is, it is. Right? Yeah. The songs, yeah. The movies, Ampama, like you yeah. got like the whole thing. It's actually quite a, a yeah, a great childhood. Yeah. yeah. Right. And you learn a lot of stuff. You learn to how to uh, how, how to clean the classroom. You heard about that, right? So every day, you know, um, say rotating jobs. Yeah. So we have yeah. different jobs every day after class, and we would you know sweep the floor, we would yeah. wipe the windows, whatever every day, mm-hmm. you know. So there's no janitors. Right. So that's well, what we why do. W- they don't need it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so when you got back to America, you were like, I was like chores. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what I do, hmm? what I do, but there's, yeah. it's like a VIP treatment, right? So there's janitors walking around, sweeping the floor. I'm like, Oh, uh, wow. they're doing my job today. Yeah. All right. Well, I feel special. But well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we joke, but one of the awesome things about Japan is it's, uh, I like to call it like a very linear culture. It's very hardworking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's, there's a, clear and definite sense of right and wrong yeah yeah i mean there's no this or that you know what i mean yeah it's like it's right or it's wrong yeah and you work or you work (laughs) yeah 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 (laughs) right i mean just like you're talking about and you do your you you know um so i think that's great i I mean if if i was gonna say how you know to grow up in in two different cultures like that's the kind of the ideal situation you get ingrained yeah. and socialized yeah. into this really hard-working culture mm-hmm. and then you come here to america and you're like oh okay we didn't have to work that hard obviously <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no it's uh that's a blessing for sure yeah yeah so what did so then you moved back and you came to indiana yep and you were how old uh 10 or 11 so you started playing soccer in japan Yes, I did. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they're good. I mean, they're good. Japan. Well, first of all, on the world stage, mm-hmm. J- the Japanese women's team oh, right, yeah. in the yeah. World Cup. Yep. Uh, the men's team is doing well. Okay. Not bad. I mean, relative yeah. to the world. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. Doing I guess really so. well. Yeah. 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 Uh, who's what's their best player's name? Oh, right now, uh, number ten. I think he had number ten. Kagawa. But, Kagawa yeah. used to be one of the one of the one of the good ones. Uh, Honda. Honda. Yeah. He recently moved to Brazil. Yeah. They're playing um, internationally. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We saw on TV, they had a, a beach soccer tournament, mm-hmm. America versus Japan. Oh, yeah. Soccer on the beach? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. It's tough. I was going to say, that sounds impossible. Yeah. Oh, have you never seen it? No. Oh, wow. It it's crazy, yeah, it's right? It's crazy, yeah. They juggle the ball most of the times because you can't really pass on that. Right. The, yeah. Like so they, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, you kind of yeah. kick it up in the air to yourself yeah. and then you do a side kick and yeah. you just go, bam! Yeah. Like it slams really hard and yeah. it's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. But yeah. Japan won. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Like America, That's man. Awesome. We need to, how do we lose at our own I sport? Know. I don't we know. We have chores growing up. Right? Exactly. <laughs> no <laughs> discipline. <laughs> <laughs> there we yeah. go. Uh, so soccer, yeah. So you, you were playing soccer in Japan, yeah. and then you came to Indiana, and they're yeah. like, and you're like, hey, I can play soccer. And they're like, hey. Yeah, that's literally how I made friends. Because, like I said, I didn't speak the language. Right. But I played soccer, and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank God they have the same rules. So you were like, um, so yeah. Yeah, you were in like fifth grade. I was in fifth grade. Yeah, I'm good so, at this. I like yeah, this game. Good. Yeah, I'm in fifth grade, and uh, I played and you soccer. Couldn't so. speak English. You're yep. in, uh, I guess, some kind of ESL, right? English yeah, I was. Language. I was in there for a good two years. Were I there think. were there any other Japanese speaking no. people? No. No other Japanese no. speaking people. How many Japanese people did you grow up with in Indiana? This is what we're talking. Are, about. are you counting my family or no? <laughs> <laughs> Outside of my family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in school? Yeah. Wow, this is taking a while. Yeah. Yeah, not many. I'm, I'm, I'm literally thinking it was at, at one point it was just my older sister. Oh wow. Okay. So it was me and my sister. Okay. And then they was were she in the same school. Maybe she one in or sixth t- grade. No, she was. Uh, so the thing is, I was. Uh, yeah, she was in sixth grade. No, she was in seventh grade. Sorry. Oh, not so even. So she in sixth was in the the big, you know, the big the big boy school. So yeah. it was hard for her. Yeah. But for me, I was like. Because in fifth grade, you're still in the classroom. Mm-hmm. You're, you're still set with the same 30 kids sure. at all times. Right. But when, once you go to seventh grade, yeah, yeah. it's free for all. Right, that- yeah. So you go to different classes with your schedule, according to your schedule. Right. So my sister had it tough. Oh, wow. But for me, I just sat there. And the thing is, I, like, in fifth grade, they learn some stuff, right? In fifth grade, like, you don't, you know, they, they don't joke around. They actually, it's like, it's a class. It's a class class, right? They do history. They do language. They uh-huh. do science whatever whatever it is right yeah. but 
obviously I didn't speak the language. So <laughs> what I what I did was my teacher bought me this uh, puzzles, just just the random puzzles that mm -hmm. I do it. Oh, like nothing to do with nothing learning. to do with the learning, like just jigsaw the puzzles. puzzles? Busy work? Yeah, zigzag puzzle. Yeah, uh, just 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 to just to keep him busy, right? And then he would awesome. buy he no he bought this. Um, I don't know if you know this leapfrog. Yeah. Um, there's this. Uh, it's a, it's like a little pen that you just press on the. Uh, is it a book? Maybe. Yeah. You just press it on an item that's on a book, and they speak it out loud for you. So like, if you press it on an apple, it's like apple. Okay. Frog. And I did that um, oh. in fifth grade. Wow. In the corner of the the classroom. Did it help? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me now. So Shit. yeah. But right. until math class, I yeah. was doing that. Okay. In math, I was like, "Yo, I got this." Like, you know, <laughs> right. Say no more numbers. I got it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, that was that was that was my fifth grade and sixth grade too. That's but, awesome. So, yeah. but I, I would think like in you're still in you got two years of elementary. Yeah. And the kids are probably um, they give you a, a wider berth, if you will. They were yeah, a little yeah. more generous. Socially. Yeah, they are. They are. Right. They were. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And then, um, so you, you made some friends on the soccer? Yeah, pitch. soccer soccer team. Um, yeah, I think that was um, one of the closest friends I've made, and I still keep in touch with them. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Then you go to, so we go through school. Yeah. And then you get into later on high school. Yeah. And you got into modeling first, isn't that right? Yeah. Uh, is, is that your first thing? Yeah. So I, I went to uh, high school in Indiana until my sophomore year. Right. Um, after that, I went back to Japan with my family. Okay. Um, and at that time, um, obviously, I wanted to pursue this right. entertainment field. But sure. growing up in Indiana, it's not realistic. So I right. um, didn't really think of it as a dream, per se. Mm. So I, you know, I didn't really do anything about it until, um, yeah, when I went back to Japan uh, in my sophomore year in high school. And then I started looking around for agencies, stuff like that. And I decided that once I go Ag to Tokyo, acting age agency, uh, modeling, or? modeling, yeah, because yeah. acting it was it was hard for me to get into, but right. modeling was I guess in an easier step for me to just take you know towards that acting right, right. stage. Um, so yeah, I decided that after um, uh, I moved to Tokyo for college, yeah, I would pursue it while I go to school. So yeah, yeah. and how'd that go? I mean, Tokyo. Yeah, it was it was awesome. Cause uh, was awesome. you're taller, right? You're uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. generally, bigger, right? bigger, bigger build. And I would uh, say. so I, I would think that that was a pretty well sought after characteristic. Uh, yeah, I guess so. But I guess I was too big, in a sense. Oh yeah. In terms of you didn't bulkiness. represent everybody. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I wasn't doing much um, while I was in Tokyo, but then I went to Ole Miss. University of Mississippi. Yeah. Shout out to Ole Miss. But right. um, yeah, I went there for a year and then I signed with an agency that was in Mississippi. With the letters J E A? J E A, yes. Yes. You know your stuff. Yeah. Yes. So J E A. And then she, you know, um, gave me the opportunity to go to LA. Right. Um, for acting. You know what's nice? Um, I actually follow J E A. Oh, you on, do? On Instagram. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thank you. And I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they got like a, a pretty good. Oh, yeah. Roster. Oh, yeah. Right. And it's diverse. Oh, yeah. And so, there's girls um, walking around, you know, Paris, New York, London, everywhere in the world. How come you're not in Paris and <laughs> New York know. and everything? <laughs> I don't know. Sure, I'll yeah. <laughs> send them. Take me to Paris. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here. Yes. Right? Yes. Well, you, you know what? Speaking of Cheryl from yeah. Jackson Entertainment. Yeah. Um, we're going to sing her praises in just a second. Sure. But what, what's your experience with Jackson Entertainment? Oh, I love it. Um, I think we... What do, you, what do you love about it? We started working, I think, almost two years, two years ago. I came here only... Oh, I was going to tell you this. Next year, or I mean, next week, Yeah. Um, I'm going to hit my third year in L.A. Wow. So it's almost three years since I've been here. Oh, met it, though. Idols that means congratulations. Yes. So I've I've been with Cheryl for more, you know two thirds of um, my career in, I guess, in LA. Yes. And like, she's been the most helpful in every, every way possible. So yes. I'm, I'm just- Can you point blessed. to anything? So how, how did you even meet Cheryl? Do you remember? Mutual friend, right? And then, right. Um, yeah, we had a meeting. Um, uh, yeah. Um, and then we started working together. Yeah, yeah. so- um, Jackson Entertainment is not an agency. No, it's not. 
It's a management company. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And we're going to meet Cheryl now. Yes. We're going to put the camera on me. And you guys are going to switch seats. Yep. Watch sure. this. Do you have the card? Are you going to put up the... Hey, look at that. This is valuable screen time, Cheryl. This is this is not your first rodeo. No, it's my second. It's your second <laughs> rodeo. <laughs> there we are. Almost. Um, yay, everybody. Cheryl Jackson. Howdy. Hello. How are you? Welcome back. Thanks. Yeah. Welcome back. So we interviewed um, Rome, right? Right. And you came that time. Thank you for coming back again. Of course. Thanks yes. for having our talent. Yeah. Thank you for having Rick here. Uh, it's, it's really wonderful to, I mean, if someone sees our show and they see the talent that you've brought to our show, they might think you only have <laughs> Japanese male <laughs> talent, <laughs> right? We got Rome and Rick. So, but that's not true. No, we have Obviously. a very diverse roster. Yes. In fact, yeah. your daughter is in, is she actually working under your wings? She is. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, but you have a lot of other people. Tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about the kind of um, talent that you look for. Um, well, we mainly are, we're looking for, always for diversity. We're looking for mm. people that we feel we can help um, because as managers, like we're, our job varies from day to day as far as what we're helping people with. And yes. Like what Rick needs may be different than what Rome needs or what another person on our roster needs. But we, everyone on our roster is a solid actor yes, and also super dedicated and training and working hard and making their appointments on time and, of course, all of that stuff. But we also look for people that are just really nice and fun to work with because at the end of the day, we're working for free until our clients book something. So we want to make sure that we're enjoying every day that yeah, it's fun for sure. Do you have like a school or some kind of um, class or something that you send people to, to, you know, to continue their education as far as acting? And stuff? Not necessarily. We, it, it really varies depending mm -hmm. on what people need and where they are, what stage they are in their mm -hmm. career. We're always looking for new resources to refer people to. And we have some lists of different classes yes. and different connections with different acting coaches and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. So, you know, if someone needs, you know, comedy or they were working on their improv will suggest like Second City or Groundlings or UCB or um, they're looking for a dramatic class. We'll, we'll look at some of the coaches that we know that folk specialize in those areas. Right. And we discussed last time, I mean, very fortunately for your agency, your cup runneth over. So you're not actively like seeking too many people. You can pick and choose as it were. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. So for Rick to be part of your group, I mean, that's quite an honor actually. Well, it's right. been great. I mean, having people who come on board um, and we're with them for the development of their mm -hmm. career. And then it's just so much fun when we start having yeah. success together and all the hard work pays off. Yeah. And you so you have actors, singers, theatrical like you cover the whole gamut. Is that right? Everyone has the common denominator of being an actor. But then okay. we have people who sing or write songs or who are dancers or samurai or you know just certain specialties samurai. in addition to acting when you well, say samurai rome. just say rome <laughs> <laughs> in the park rome in the park he needs his own show called rome in the park rome in the bar um anyways yeah, yeah. That, it's great and i know um well you told us last time you're a social worker so obviously you're judging everybody all the time no <laughs> i am not judging everyone <laughs> but it having the the masters in social work and that training and background yeah does help me in kind of assessing where people are and what they need and yeah. um, emotionally as well. It can be very stressful navigating this industry. Yes. So I like to think that we're here to support people. Yeah. I mean, pretty, pretty much a straight shooter. I mean, I don't sugarcoat things, yeah. mm. but, it, and I'm super honest when someone needs to do something, yeah. but it, it also, I also like to think that, you know, I'm supportive and, and nurturing and all that. I mean, I'm, I'm a mom and, and a social worker and a manager. So yeah, a mom to the talent or well, I'm a mom in real life, but sometimes I see what I did right there. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I am kind of their mom. A lot of the, the talent that we work with are here without family. Right. So we can, you should you know, have like a 90210 chateau kind of environment where they all live and create your own drama thing right there. Yeah. Mm, no drama. No, no drama. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So everyone, 
Cheryl Jackson from Jackson Entertainment. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you. you for having Rick. Thank of you for course. everything. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, you for too. coming on again. Of course. Yes, and now, come, bring it here. Rick is going to get back into the yes. co-pilot seat. Thank you, Cheryl, one more time. That's awesome. Yes, here he comes. So, we just learned a lot. Yes, you did. Right? I did not even say anything about agency. It's a management, management. company. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So what Cheryl's talking about is really being like a guidance counselor, you know, someone not only. Yeah, like, how, like a support system in a how, way. Yeah. yeah, so how you have to learn how to work in Hollywood, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Because like she said, like a lot of talents are here without their families, myself included. Right. So, you know, there's a lot of like obviously the career choice, but like other stuff in life, you know, how mm. to manage that and like how to do a lot of stuff in L.A. is it's, it's uh, you got to get used to it. And so, uh, it, yeah, I, I well, can't, it's, you, it's a very you social, it. it's, a, it's a social world. It is. It is. Can I say milieu? Milieu? Yes. I don't um, know what that means. I was thinking, uh, uh, yes. That means okay. environment. It's an environment. It's, it's very social. And you, yeah, yeah. I mean, so you have to have those skills. And look, you're very friendly. You have a great I smile. I try to. I try to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's a skill like being a good actor mm -hmm. is important, but of being course. political and knowing where your bread's buttered and yeah. making friends with yeah. the right people yeah. is another skill. Exactly, exactly. To get you where you want to yeah. go. Yeah. Do you have you found any like clicks? Little like my groups? niche. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Let's hear about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I guess most of them are actors, mm -hmm. uh, filmmakers, yeah. artists. I think one of the reasons is because I think our schedule fits, so we can hang out more often. Right. Um, but um, others are. I don't know. Um, people from a Japanese community that's uh, yeah. that's pretty big in LA. So right. I hang out with those people as well, um, just to talk about other stuff than you know entertainment stuff. Have you found? Um, so we know Rome. I don't know if you ever talked to Rome outside of. No, uh, I've, I've, uh, I've, hung, I've hung out. Yeah, with he's Rome a great guy. Yeah, Takato-san. Do you yeah, ever talk yeah, to him? Yeah. You guys live near each other, somewhat. I somewhat. think. Yeah, I think he lives in Culver City. So I live in Culver side. City. So I think we're. Yeah. Somewhat close. I don't know where he exactly lives, but right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, so I see Rome's going back to Japan. Tokyo's yeah. He's going back to, is it Osaka? Is he from, I know. Oh, is he? I don't know. I haven't talked uh, to him but in a while. Yeah. yeah. He got, I see. Well, I just like to follow everyone. Yeah. On, on yeah. The IG, yeah. if you will. I got to do that more often. You know, yeah. well, I just, it, for no, what it's I good. do, it it's helps good. me to keep yeah, up. Definitely. And so your chops, you get your, you, you get your app. Do you do any like the groundlings or the, I've done know, improv, improv I've done stuff, but I'm doing scene study right now in Santa Monica. Uh, there's a film work, um, actors, film actors workshop called the uh, Tony Bars Acting. Okay. Um, and I've been there um, multiple times and uh, it's actually pretty and good. And where are they at? Why don't you tell people Eric where they're Clark. at? Yes. They're in Santa Monica? They're in Santa Monica. Yeah. yeah. And so you go there and you read a lot of scripts and you work with it's, other... Yeah, actors. so you, you get to work with, um, obviously the other actor or actress and um, they actually film it. So mm -hmm. you get to see how you look on camera oh, that's great. and it's multi-camera. So it's almost like a sitcom. Oh wow. So like you shoot a scene and imme immediately after he'll just put it up and print it and we'll see it. So like, you know, you'll get the real stuff. Do you think you have an advantage acting on camera because you have modeling in your background? Not really. Okay. Yeah. Does, it hold you, does it give you weird uh, challenges? Um, Cause I don't want people to look at me like that. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, I'm like, you know what I mean? Like I don't yeah. want people to, people to see me as like, Oh, he's a, oh, he's a model that actor. became an actor. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like I just stepped into the modeling world because I didn't know where to go first. Okay. That was just it. I didn't have this much of a passion. I would about, just say this. Yeah. Modeling or Can yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Rick. Yes. Do not be apologetic about modeling. No, it's, it's, I will never I, be a model. <laughs> I want people to recognize me as an actor yeah, more than more than yes. that actor could be a model. Exactly. Yeah. How about that? These, yeah. Yeah. Ed, yeah. these are good looking people problems, right? <laughs> Dude, you, first of all, yeah. do you have a certain thing that you're like a certain type of acting role that you're trying to get? Are you trying to be like a TV no, actor? That's the thing. Like I'm open to anything. Comedy, drama, stunt. You are anything. funny. Now what I've seen of, I'm you funny. know, <laughs> no, I mean, you're a funny guy. Entertaining, yes. And are, well, funny in a funny, good way. Thank right? you. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. But when I see like 
when we hung out with like Roman together yeah, and yeah. like, dude, it's just like a laugh a minute. Yeah. And in fact, I said to you yeah. and I said to Roman, he yeah. was here. I said, you guys should have your own show here at our junction. <laughs> should. You guys should, should be doing your own thing. Just take a half hour, sit down and just talk and laugh and have fun and, yeah. you know, come up with a concept. Yeah. And oh, like, that would actually be pretty fun. Yeah. I think we pitched that to Cheryl at some point, didn't we? <laughs> we said we'd like to do that. So Maybe, we'll see if yes. she'll give us the the thumbs up on that. But I mean, it would be a laugh a minute. Yeah, I yeah. think a lot of people would like, would like to watch it. Yeah. Five um, views. Yeah. Solid five views. No. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, I'm kidding. I mean, oh, six, maybe you're, you're, including Rome, but you're, you're talking to Philly G that has <laughs> six <laughs> views. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, I get, it, yeah, it yeah of course. Great. Yeah. No. I think that's creating your own content really helps you oh, yeah. to master your, oh, yeah. your, your skill of yeah. acting. Oh, can I talk film. about that? Yeah. Creating my own content? Please. So me and my friend, uh, his name is Aoi Takeya. He's, he's an actor here in LA. He's a Japanese American mm -hmm. as well. Um, we're actually doing a cooking YouTube show. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that should be coming up around March. Nice, what's it called? Uh, Chef Blue Bear. <laughs> Chef Blue Bear? Yes. So Aoi in Japanese means blue. Right. And my last name, Kuma, means bear. Mm. So blue bear, blue and bear. Then we just put chef in the yeah, front. Cool yeah, yes. we already have our customized apron and everything. We already shot our first episode, so oh, that's cool. awesome. um, yeah, I'm excited about this. You know, it's Are something you? that um, we're both passionate about cooking. Yeah, it's sort of therapeutic in a way. You know, so ladies, when can also cook. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, but it's not a tutorial by any means. It's yeah. it's, it's just us cooking. Julia Childs, and, you know, just showing. Will. Yeah, showing the world. Right. Are you drinking shochu or sake or? No, we're not. We're very no. sober. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're, <laughs> we're very sober. Yeah. No, you said when's it coming out? Uh, beginning of March. Beginning uh, of March. Tell everyone in this yeah, camera. So, Where can um, people see it? It should be on YouTube. Uh, we have the channel. We haven't updated or uploaded anything on that channel yet, but it's called Chef Blue Bear. Chef Blue Bear. So um, <laughs> hopefully you guys can check it out. Uh, it should be coming out in the beginning of March. Um, that's that's exciting. Yeah, that's something I'm like also passionate about outside of acting, cooking. So yeah, um, you know, to do that in front of the camera, it's another good experience for me to be, you know, be comfortable. I guess. Cool. Yeah. 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 Mostly Japanese, or are you throwing some Indiana home cooking in there? Um, the first couple episodes is gonna be Japanese dish. Okay. Yeah, but after that, we're thinking um, we'll get people to comment what their favorite dish is yeah. from all over the world, and we'll randomly pick one. Right. And We'll read it out loud. We don't know what it is. We'll research it. We'll go to like, let's say it's a Filipino um, yeah. dish. Yeah. And then we go to Filipino market. We get all the ingredients. We, you know, do it from scratch yeah, and see if we actually nailed it or didn't nail it. That's you know great. I mean? So it's like, it's, yeah. yeah, it's like experimental sort of channel. Yeah. We need special judges for the Filipino episode. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> right. You will be yes. on Bravo's Top Chef Universal oh, Studios yes. Hollywood yeah. experience. You guys will be the not, chefs. I, I will talk to the that, people. Awesome. We'll yeah. have to get on the Bravo Network yeah. and let yeah. them know to watch your show. Yeah. Um, but, you great. know, I think really the having that diversity and oh, yeah. content is important. Definitely. And that gives you a leg up. Here I am doing a net show. Yeah. And sorry, but it's just me. However, <laughs> it's the talent yeah. that I bring on to introduce you so we could learn about them. Right. Mm -hmm. Learn about your skills mm -hmm. and Thank learn you. from your experiences, your grind, how you're really grinding and yeah. trying to. Yeah get to wherever it is you think you want to get, which, mm -hmm. you know, you could think like being famous is not a goal. Can I say that right now? Being wealthy. That's so true. Is not a goal. That's so true. Right? It's just a byproduct. It is. A, why? I, dude, I couldn't have said it better. You know what I mean? I like it's that. Yes. I, I might have read it somewhere, so don't quote me on this one, but you know, <laughs> cause I don't want to be like, people are going to comment. It's like, Oh, someone else said that, yeah. you know, but, that was Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, like a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, people that are trying to come up, uh, they're like, oh, I'm going to be famous. I want to be rich. I'm like, dude, just enjoy what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. people are successful because they're good at that. Right. You know what I mean? They're passionate about that. Mm -hmm. They're not there because they wanted to be famous or they wanted to be rich or they wanted to yeah. be on TV or I don't know. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. That status, it's, it's not it's not real. Like, Do you think sometimes you yeah. could be good at something and then like you don't really know you're good at it? And then people oh, are yeah, like, definitely. hey, you're good at that. Definitely. Right. Yeah. So I think you should try everything. That's you what I try. did. Yeah. Yeah. From my 18 to now I'm 25. But the seven years from from the day I left my parents' house. Yeah. I did everything in my power to try everything. 
like I was working in a construction zone. Yes. Because I, I kind of liked the, the thought of that. Yes. I was a bartender. Uh, I worked in retail. I worked in like 10 restaurants. I worked yeah. in, um, I was a English teacher. At one point, could you right. go from ESL to English? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know, right? Great. Yeah. I, I need yeah. I need Rick to teach me some English. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Yeah. I think you know when some people. I this is my prediction for you. Yeah. As you get a few years older, yeah, you're going to get more and more work because I think Thank you. like I the that. the seasoned look on you as mm-hmm. you get a little bit more uh, gritty. Mm-hmm. Like I think that's going to be a great um, asset for you. Thank as you. soon as he's able to grow a mustache. <laughs> Well, let's not get crazy. <laughs> no, that's true though. I yeah. gotta work on that. Like, no, I, I mean, I it's great grow, to have a baby face, which I is can cool. Grow a little, you know. A little well, we're not talking not bit. hair. We're not talking about facial hair, but you know, like the as as you get a little bit grittier, yeah, and and yeah. you learn more and you get more confident in your craft, yeah, and then you walk in, it's like that confidence along with like everything else you have is really gonna shine through. I think that. Thank will, you. No, yeah. I appreciate that. yeah, and so that's what I you needed. So. That's what really the grind. Yeah, you know. Yeah. What's your daily grind? Let's see what um, you do. Obviously, I got to be ready for anything, right? So mm-hmm. every audition comes out last minute. So um, I try to stay fit as much as I can. Right. Because what if the audition's for that, you know, that uh, requires a physical task? Yeah. And I'm not, I can't be ripped in two days, three days, right? Yeah. So I'd rather be ripped or lean or healthy um, yes. so that I'm prepared for that. Because, like, I can look lazy or skinny with wardrobe choices right you know what i mean but you can't look tough or you can't look buff yeah i mean you i mean you could you can wear layers but you know it doesn't no i think um one of the things that goes along with that is when i look at all the pictures um that you post on your instagram yeah or social media yeah when you play that role of like the yakuza yeah you know henchman yeah, yeah. or something yeah. that it suits you really well thank you no you i know? like that role yeah they don't ever ask you to grow your hair out or whatever um not really but i'm sure they want me to grow you know beard if i if, they, if i could well not beard i mean i don't know how yakuza looks. i don't know it's been a while since i hung out with them <laughs> I think I saw I, I think I saw a Yakuza uh, yeah. on the train once in the in Japan. Yeah. Like I was just like going so the train stopped from twelve to five AM. Like when you go out, yeah. right? Usually. <laughs> you yeah. go out, yeah. you go to the bar, yeah. you start drinking. So you gotta stay out the until train, five AM. Wait, midnight to five AM there's no train. That's no right. train. Yeah. So okay. you so you're staying there. You're yeah. committed. But there's caps. Yeah, but nobody's oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> because you're you're taking the train pretty yeah. far away, oh, most yeah. likely. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So um you go and then 5 a.m. Everyone goes back to the subway station. And you yeah. see people laying all over. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's a, a disaster. <laughs> so I go in and um, people don't want to sit. I mean, it's weird. People don't want to sit next to me. The white guy coming in the train. But I see this one guy and he's like stretched out and he's, his shirt's open with his glasses on and everything. I'm like, that guy's got to be a good yeah, guy. Yeah. Right? And he, yeah. I'm sure he wasn't. Yeah. But, you know, it's yeah. just like you're just so arrogant. Yeah. Like people frown upon yeah, that, right? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. But I've, I've, you, you won't notice though. That's the thing. Like, like you said, you, you don't know who's in Yakuza or not because they look sure. like normal people because yeah. they wear suits. Everyone wears suits. Yeah. And can look, you guess who I, who people say that I look like in Japan? Jason Statham. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, right. But that's not it. That's not it. No. Anyone, Paul? Uh, Bruce Willis. Oh, I yes, see Bruce that. Willis. I see yeah. that. Yeah, Thank you. I see that. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. So hard, man. <laughs> yeah. God. Right. Yeah. I see that. That's so awesome. when I go to Japan, by the way, I, I'm with my family, and it's all good family, uh, yeah. family all the time. But I get usually one or two nights to go out on my own. Mm-hmm. Whatever, no question, just go <laughs> yeah. and have fun. And there are places that I love going. Rock Bar Star, I'll see you coming up in July. I'll be in Japan in July. Oh, yeah? I hope you're out there, man. I, we'll, I'll try to we'll be there. We'll have some yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, and I just have a great time. Oh, yeah. You know? That's great. I want to talk. So our segment is done. I'm going to get a little bit serious. I mean, yeah, it's let's, lighthearted, let's it. but there's something that bothers me. And yeah. I don't know if you're, are you political at all? Um. Sure. Well, I'm well, I'm really in it. Like I'm okay, in it. Okay. We are uh, the Harmon Press here, mm-hmm. Argentum, and mm-hmm. I. We're a union company, Teamsters mm-hmm. Five Seven Two. Mm-hmm. Um, we're Big D Democrats. Mm-hmm. We're um, all about diversity, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Inclusiveness. Yeah. People who come here, like we want, we want it to be everybody. 
no matter you know what talent you have but also yeah. where you're from or whatever yeah because that diversity brings more flavor and song to the world so yeah, that we could all definitely. enjoy more mm -hmm. but you know in our times like right now with the academy awards yeah um some people were not really cool about their response to the parasite the parasite the movie parasite mm -hmm. winning you know the top really award you know and okay. i think across our country that could be a sentiment especially with the president that we have and the leadership mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. they talk about you know hollywood being like true you know yeah. i get a little bit emotional because i really don't have time for you know for people who are narrow minded yeah right yeah and for people who are uh, insensitive about mm -hmm. well i need everything to look just like me right what is that mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so this movie parasite yeah it's made by the korean filmmaker and mm -hmm. director bon joon ho yeah yeah and uh, they got the top award yeah, best picture. And and there's just best international yeah. film, right? Best director, yeah. best original screenplay. I mean, well done, well done. preach, man. Are you kidding me? That's yeah. Crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Walt Disney did that. That's the only other man. That right? Do that for one night. Yeah. yeah. So, how dare they come into our Academy Awards? And let me just say this. 90 was it 92nd Academy, Academy, Academy Awards, right? yeah. yeah. First foreign picture to win best picture. Right. right. Yeah. Are you kidding me? 92 <laughs> years like you know, like, and they're they're still talking about oh, they won or international film, so they shouldn't be in whatever. Like, that's such a weird what? Idea. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I get you. It's you know the thing is about you know the film is it's art. Yeah. You can't put a restriction on art right. by any means, right? Yeah. Whether it's cultural, whatever. Sure. Like, so I just don't get why people. Are upset about that because right? it's, it's and art. it's kind of like even a reverse discrimination, yeah. right? Oh well, how could you go up on stage and not speak English? Number one, and number two, yeah. well, let's just give them the award, which I don't think is true. Mm -hmm. It's a fallacy. Mm -hmm. Let's give them the award to make them feel better, so we don't hear all these you know minorities complaining anymore. Oh, I didn't let's, see that. Let's shut side, them up. But that's I'm just saying. Yeah, you know that yeah. could be another. That's, that's the reverse. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's the even more insidious. Yeah, racism. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, appreciate all film and all content exactly. for what it is. Exactly. You know, whether yeah. if it's different or it's not different, if it includes your whatever yeah. nationality or enjoy it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because I'm going to make something right here. I'm making exactly. something, right? Yeah. Ed, put it right here. Here I am. Hi, guys. It's just Phil. I'm coming to you, and I hope you enjoy what I'm bringing to you. And um, it's my flavor. This is my show, yeah. and I hope you enjoy it. And I have Rick on. Look, there he is. Right? Mm -hmm. And he's an awesome guy. Yeah. And you all should enjoy it. And you all should appreciate him and everyone else that comes. Um, so I'm but just But even saying. if you don't, it's fine. Yeah, you know you, what I mean? Yeah, even if you don't enjoy well, me. You should be open to... Exactly. You should be open to... Oh, yeah. I'm to open. Learning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I oh. Mean, how do we even yeah. know? How do yeah. we... Dude, you look at Rick and you're judging him from the second you see him just based on his looks. You look Japanese. You look Asian, <laughs> you right? Look yeah, I mean, you yeah. look Asian first. Yeah. Okay, now you're exactly. Japanese. Oh, exactly. you're from Kentucky, right? Yeah. Then you're from, right? <laughs> yeah. Then Nagoya, and then yeah. you come back. Yeah. And yeah. Dude, you're like a whole story. Right. And if I was just going to shut you off at mm -hmm. the front door based on your looks, based Asian on prejudices, yes. I don't know anything about what you're up to. Right. Great soccer player. Hey. Model. Actor. <laughs> <laughs> Actor first, and a... Oh, part-time model? A sensitivity, sorry. Yeah. No, 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 you're good. You're Let's good. rewind. Hey. I know, sorry, dude. Exactly, yeah. Well, for, I mean, it's it's everything. Because I've everything. never taken class for modeling. You know what I mean? I didn't, dude, I hit the I button. Mean, sorry, you, I hit a sensitive button. Do you? No, 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 no it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> are, there, are there classes? They teach you, like, the oh, yeah, the, and also they, they teach you how to walk and oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. In high heels? I've never done that. Because I'm... I've done, I mean, I've done runway too. Yeah. Yeah. And no one said your walk is weird. Or no. <laughs> I just, telling me you are natural. No, I'm not oh, saying that. I'm what? just saying Easy, I would. Paul. He's no, good. <laughs> no, I invest more time to acting. Okay. And I invest more financially in acting as well. Yeah. So I'm more passionate about acting. So I want people to recognize <laughs> me as an actor instead of the model. Because in I'm just fact. Like, model. Exactly. Paul, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Paul, if you want to see him acting, although it's not really acting, it's mm -hmm. more improvising. We could watch you on YouTube. And oh, yeah. Thank blue, you. Yeah. 
Bear. Chef, Chef Blue Bear. Bear. Chef Blue Bear. Yes. Right? Should be coming out next month. Next so. month. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You said a lot today. Did I? You did. I hope so. I, we've learned a lot. That's why hope you're here. So, yeah. We wanted hope to learn so. about uh, your talent and your experiences. Yeah. And I really feel like we've covered. Yeah. I just want to, you know, I just want to be authentic. That's, Don't call him a model. Yeah. If you see him out, if, you, if yeah. you see him, uh, yeah. you know. In Beverly Hills, don't call him a model. Actor. <laughs> call him an He's actor. An actor. <laughs> exactly. So what we're going to do is bring the camera over here. Thank you. I'm going to say thank you to Cheryl from Jackson Entertainment. I'm going to ask you, you and Paul to switch because he's going to read yes. um, the credits and everything. But I'm going to say domo arigatogozaimasu. I mean, it's really a pleasure to have Rick Kumazawa here today. Kuma, meaning bear. Oi, meaning blue. Aoi. 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 A-O-I. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so here we go. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Paul. He's going to read credits, though. But I just want to thank everybody. We are much better as people for having you here. Come in here today and share your life with us. That's Paul, right. Go ahead. Special thanks to Rick Kumazawa and to Cheryl from Jackson Entertainment for coming in today. We'd like to remind everyone that Talk Talk with Philly G is recorded live at Argentum Studios in North Hollywood, California, produced by Edgar Sunga, Mark Labella, Kevin Ariaga, Becca Matty. Background Cityscape Behind Me is provided by a photographer, Ted Soki, and Ted. printed at A&I Fine Art Photography, part of the Harmon Press Teamsters 572, also home of Argentum Studios in beautiful North Hollywood, California. Phil? All right, so are we going to have our outro music? you have any music oh, yeah, for our let's, outro? Let's rock out. What do you think? No. We have the show intro. Uh, well, let's yeah, do let's do show. it. All, All right. right. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Phil. We will see you next time. This is Talk Talk with Philly G. I'm Philly G. Apropos. I'm Luca. Luca, thank you. And good night. Good night. See you next time.